Hello everyone, good morning. I'm sitting out here in my backyard this morning. It's Wednesday and um, having a wonderful morning. I have a little free time this morning and I thought I would review um, some information on endoscopic brow lifting and provide some data that I attained at the recent uh, multi-specialty aesthetic meeting in San Diego, which I was at for five days, got back on Monday. It was an amazing meeting. I gave uh, two talks ran some sessions, had a lot of great discussions with people. And the reason I wanna talk about endoscopic brow lifting, because it's a topic of uh, controversy and there's many ways to do this procedure. And by just kind of talking to a lot of colleagues and getting a consensus, I wanted to say what I felt the uh, most uh, common preferences I identified at the meeting and then give you my view on all of them. So let's start with endoscopic brow lifting. Brow lifting is when the brow is elevated. There are many ways to do this. Uh, historically, and the endoscopic style came about in the last 20 years and became very popular. What that means is that incisions are made behind the hairline. A lighting device uh, with a camera is used to visualize. You enter through the little uh, openings you make in the skin, and then an elevator is used. It's an instrument, a dissector, uh, to release tissue, and then the brow is lifted and fixated to a higher location. There can be some elevation of the hairline, although not significant with this procedure. And uh, we had a lot of discussion on it, so let me review the salient features. First of all, uh, one of the topics of conversation is should you routinely perform a full brow lift? That means the outer brow, the middle brow, the central on every patient, or tailor it, and for instance, just do an outer brow or temple lift, which is most of what I do. 90% of the procedure I do is just a temple lift. So uh, let me tell you what I found at the meeting. So about 50% of people still routinely do a full brow lift on everyone and 50% of people just raise the outer brow. So it's kind of half and half. My aesthetic is just to raise the outer brow. Why is that? Because if you look the aging process, the muscle that lifts the brow that causes these wrinkles in the forehead is called the frontalis muscle and it doesn't exist over the outer brow but the muscle that depresses the brow, these muscles that push it down, do exist over the outer brow. So as you age, when you don't have an elevator, you do have a depressure and you lose volume of fat and the bone remodels and you lose volume, there tends to be descent of the outer brow. Most people, the outer brow descends. When the outer brow descends, skin extends beyond the eyelet and that leads to a lot of hooding in that area. And what I find is, is if you just raise the outer brow a bit and take some skin off, you can get a good eyelid surgery. Another thing that I teach everyone and I discuss with people at the meeting is what is the purpose of a brow lift? The purpose of a brow lift is to perform good eyelid surgery. The brow and eyelid are an aesthetic unit. They act together. If I push my brow down, my eyelid becomes heavy. If I lift my brow, the eyelid's not heavy. So I constantly teach and everyone in this field is teachers, that the brow and eyelid are one unit, they should be treated together. And in the majority of people, raising the outer brow allows you to do a good blepharoplasty, not extend the incision, not look uh, surprised. So again, my preference is to raise the outer brow. The reason for that is when you raise the full brow across the board on everyone, when the middle brow comes up, it doesn't just come up, it splays this way. And when that happens, it gives you a surprised look. Now there are people, especially those who are older, that there's a lot of middle brow drop and it does need to be elevated. But I find in my case that that's only 10% of people. So take home message from the meeting is that 50% of people still raise the full brow, not my aesthetic. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's not my aesthetic and the rest just lift the outer brow. You could lift the outer brow or the full brow endoscopically, it's a safe procedure. That pretty much was accepted by everyone. Okay. So besides what part of the brow you raise, what about does everyone use an endoscope or not? Well, clearly, if you have a light, a camera, and a monitor, you can see everything. If you're only raising the outer brow, <clears throat> you can do it with some kind of retractor that opens the incision and a headlight, a light over your head, and an elevator and do it safely. How do I know that? I looked at, God, 300 cases or so without the endoscope and found that there was no reason that the endoscope improved the outcome in my hands and most people I speak to say the exact same thing. When you do a full brow lift and raise the center, there are those that still don't use the endoscope. They come up with tricks of ways not to do it. The reason I say that is there's some nerves that give feeling to the forehead in that area and you can directly visualize them. You protect them, but there are those that believe 
even without visualization with endoscope, there are ways to still protect them. I personally, when I do a full brow lift, still use the endoscope centrally. I don't have to, but I still do, but there are many that don't. So the endoscope I found was still used in about 80% of doctors I spoke to and only 20% said they didn't use an endoscope. In my personal practice, when I do a temple lift only, I don't need the scope. I do use it if there's observers watching <clears throat> for education purposes and for the central brow. I still use the endoscope, although I don't have to. Okay, now you've, uh, we talked about what part of the brow uh, to lift. Do you use the endoscope or not? How about how do you fixate or uh, allow the brow to be stable in a higher position? Well, when you open and close your mouth like this, you can see that there's a muscle moving here. It's called the temporalis. It's a muscle of mastication or of chewing, and it has a tendon over it. And if you just lift the outer brow, you can secure it to that tendon. But if you want to lift the brow more medial towards the center, whether it be the outer brow or the middle brow, there is no tendon to fixate to. So what are the options? Well, there's all kinds of interesting suture techniques, which I think are plus minus, but you have to fixate it to bone. And how do you fixate it to bone? Some people use plastic implants stuck to bone and they tie sutures of that to hold it. Some people make a little groove in the bone and fixate it that way. I'm not a believer of putting implants. That doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just that whenever you put a foreign body, there's a chance for infl inflammation, infection, pain, etc. And if you make that little groove or tunnel in the bone, you avoid that. Um, and there's a way to do that very, very safely. And that's been shown um, over many, many cases. You have to know the thickness of the bone, the area of the bone, etc. So that's fixation of the brow. Um, what about <clears throat> um, postoperatively after the brow, care for a person who has a brow lift? Well, what I find is that these are the important things. The two things to control after surgery are nausea and pain. So I find that when you release the retaining ligaments, the ligaments that hold the brow down, especially on people that have a shorter forehand, they tend to have nausea. There is a medication called EMEND, E-M-M-E-N-D, also called a prepotent, <clears throat> um, that's its generic name, and it can be purchased and taken two hours before surgery, and I find when you give people EMEND, it's highly ever do they get nausea. It doesn't break a nausea attack, but it tends to prevent it. Postoperatively, I give people medications to stop nausea should they develop it. The problem with nausea is, is when you get nauseated, you're not eating, and if you're vomiting a little bit and losing fluid, it creates a cycle of worsening the nausea. So I think it's important if you're someone who is car sick, or as I said, have a short forehead and are more prone to nausea to give you a medication beforehand, um, and some people give it to everyone across the board beforehand. I kind of tried to pull people at that in the meeting, but I couldn't get a direct response. Um, and there are, again, post-operative medications by mouth, suppositories, et cetera, that help control nausea. There's certain patches, et cetera. We have a whole um, designation of medications for that. What about pain? Everyone asks about pain after brow lifting. Well, I find that about 75% of people get a headache. And some people, it's more severe, and they get pain medications for that. But if someone is a migraineur, has migraine headaches, I think almost all of them uh, can develop pain afterwards. And there are things we can do to help control that at the end of the case, and I always seek out that history. The problem with narcotics after surgery is narcotics can make you nauseous and can work and, and can worsen that cycle too. So everything is a balance. There's ways to control it. We talk to each patient and we customize it um, according uh, to each patient. Finally, what about, I talked to people about what they felt the success rate and the satisfaction was with this um, endoscopic brow lifting, whether it be just the tail of the brow or the full brow. And I would say that most people today agree that once you learn the procedure and become comfortable with it, that it's a safe procedure and a highly effective in elevating the brow and creating good patient satisfaction. Nothing is 100% like any procedure, nothing can be guaranteed, but it's a very useful tool in surgery because it allows better eyelid work. When the brow is put in better position, because the brow and eyelids are an, aesthetic, are an aesthetic unit, you do tend to get better results. Hope this clarifies some things and just sharing my comments from the weekend um, at the multi-specialty meeting in San Diego. Have a great day all.